All right. Hey, folks, it's Faz here from Faz Lifts. So the question of today is, how do you hold on to all those hard-earned muscle gains when you're on a cut? So first of all, thanks for joining me on my channel. Um, if you are not already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Um, hit the notification bell for repeat videos, and let's begin. All right, so the topic of the day is, how do you retain muscle when you're cutting? I think that's of prime importance. If you're watching this channel, odds are you lift weights, you are concerned with having a muscular body. So let's crack on and see what we've got. As usual, I've got a summary here. Uh, so summary of the issue is that cutting body weight is inherently catabolic, all right? You're in a deficit of some kind, whether that's induced by cardio or calories or both, usually both, you are inherently catabolic. So that's the problem. Now, catabolism is a state where your body is trying to liberate resources, it's breaking things down to enable you to survive. We should aim to maximize fat loss while simultaneously minimizing muscle loss. That should be the aim always. Now, it turns into a question of signaling. So you have a catabolic nature of a deficit. So the deficit puts you in a whole body catabolic state. So what we need to do is we need to provide enough anabolic signaling that we can retain muscle while making sure the majority of the weight that we lose is actually fat and not muscle tissue. Now, it, fortunately, it's relatively easy to do that. <laughs> uh, and there are two main things in our arsenal that we can do. One, we can strength train, like progressively strength train, hit the weights and hit the weights hard, all right? Train hard, train with sufficient volume. And I've just written here as a bit of a side note, I don't agree with this idea that this notion that some coaches have of that when you cut, you should lower volume immediately. People talk all the time. The, originally, there was talks of, well, you can get away with a third of the volume it took you to build your mass. Like, yeah, sure, you can. But then... <laughs> the internet being the internet <laughs> that got into that turn from you can get away with a third of the volume to you should do a third of the volume immediately and that just doesn't make any sense i mean look you've got a guy who's eating 3000 calories in the off season decides to do a cut goes down 2500 and then reduces his workout volume by two thirds all right cool so all he's done is he's reduced his calories and he's reduced his energy expenditure. So that calorie deficit is not as impactful as it should have been. Like you don't need to immediately lower the volume and preempt it. Like you don't know, you, you might be fine. So I don't agree with automatically immediately lowering the volume. You've still got to put in, you've still got to provide an anabolic stimulus to ensure you, you maintain your musculature. So I think you should hold on to your, your regular training as much as you can. Okay. Provide the anabolic signaling. Make sure that whatever weight comes off you, it is fat and it is not muscle. And the next biggest thing you can do is eat enough protein. You've got to eat enough protein. Like so, on this note, you know, eating enough protein. What does that actually mean in terms of the numbers? So, if you are a numbers guy, if you're a macros guy, then I would say with that, you want to be aiming for about anywhere between 0.8 grams per pound to a gram per pound. That's pretty safe. We know that 0.8 grams per pound is a good minimum. A gram per pound is fine. If you are very overweight, like if you're 40 to 50 pounds, you could probably get away with less. Um, but in any case, roughly around that ballpark is pretty good. So that's what I would aim for. And in terms of distribution, aim to distribute that as evenly as possible. Like, yeah, okay, like I, I am a fan of fasting. Just uh, as a bit of a sort of a, a note on that. I am a fan of fasting, you know, like I don't think it's a be all and end all, but it's, it, I, it's, I like it. It makes me feel good. I don't necessarily think it's the best idea on a cut um, because then you're going long periods of time without having any anabolic signaling and you've got a lot of catabolic signaling, possibly not that useful. Um, I mean, there are certain circumstances where you could probably get away with it, but that's not really what the subject of today is. So the next question that I get is, okay, Faz, well, where do I pull the calories from? So protein stays the same. It's got to stay high. So the question, next question will always be, what do I get? And I, so I say, look, reduce calories from either carbs or fat. And the question is always, well, which one's better? Because everyone looks for the perfect program, right? Uh, now, I don't, I'm not going to be pigeonholed into saying which one's better because it's irrelevant. Okay, it, It's completely irrelevant. 
what I want you guys to do is focus more on filling foods which actually satiate you. Like this is a key important part. Like it doesn't matter about the minutia doesn't matter. There should be a strong feeling of that coming through in this in, t in my in my body of work. Like the minutia doesn't matter. What matters is actually sticking to something for long enough to see results, right? That's the most important thing. So if it's slightly more optimal to have carbs rather than fat, but you don't want carbs, you want to have more fat in your diet, have more fat because that will keep you happier for longer and that will make sure you can stick to the diet for longer. And that, in a sense, is more optimal, right? So moving on. The next thing is satiety. Now, a few things, a couple of things here. One, don't get hungry. Okay, now, the big thing here I want to say is when you're on a cut, generally what you want to avoid is just having less of the same food that got you fat in the first place. Like, don't do that, okay? If you got fat on just chocolate bars and burgers and pizzas and croissants, and that's what you've been doing for the last 10 years, it'll work to a certain extent just to lower the amount of food you eat. But what will work even better is to actually pick foods which are more satiating, have more volume in them. Like if you go from a pizza to, I don't know, a chicken salad, it's an extreme example, but there are <laughs> there are things in between that as well, right? So, and I'll, I'll link up a my video that I did on what to eat on a cut over there. So you guys can check that out. On, and I talk about precisely everything about this, what to eat on a cut, and that's probably more useful. But anyway, I just want to say that when you're on a cut, you, the amount of food you eat, the actual volume of the food should go up. And that'll go up because you'll make better food choices. Like, yeah, you can diet on protein shakes and Pop-Tarts. By the way, just drop down in comments if you recognize where that um, reference is from. So you can diet on protein shakes and Pop-Tarts, sure, but you're probably going to be really hungry. And if you're not really hungry on that, well, yeah, you're probably not the kind of person that needs diet advice, okay? So uh, secondly, and this is something which isn't talked about very much, don't get cravings. So take care of the various textures and tastes that you crave. I believe that people get cravings because they have a desire for certain tastes and textures. Like if we think of the prototypical thing that people love to eat, um, you know, they miss is chocolate. Chocolate is like the perfect combination of sugar, sweet, salt, um, carbs, fats, everything which is designed to entice all of your various taste buds into making you want more, all right? If you can satisfy the majority of those in a diet, you at least reduce the chance of having cravings, okay? So it's worth thinking about. And as I say, watch the video over there and um, I think you'll find that useful. So next up, um, in terms of the bottom line, because I want to keep this video nice and short and sweet and simple. Think, conceptualize dropping fat. Think of dropping fat as providing a strong anabolic signal. So provide a stronger anabolic signal as you can while your calories are low, okay? That way, you will drop body weight, but you'll maximize the ability to retain muscle tissue while making sure the majority of what you do drop is fat. Your body needs a reason to hold on to muscle and it needs the resources to hold on to muscle. Ergo, strength, strength train and eat a lot of protein. Do those two things. The rest of the minutia doesn't matter. Just be in a deficit. So in terms of some, some more minor details there, which are relevant, keep protein a little bit on the higher end. About 0.8 grams to one gram per pound of body weight is fine. You can get away with a little bit less of that ratio if you are have got a lot to lose. Like if you've got 40 to 50 pounds to lose, you could probably get away with a little bit less. Pull the remainder of your calories from carbs and fats. Slowly decrease them from carbs and fats. And focus less on where you're pulling your calories from. Just focus on macro composition. And focus more on delicious filling foods that you can eat and your food volume, which should go up. This is one of the reasons why, um, quote unquote, you know, good foods uh, tend to work quite well on a diet <laughs> because they fill you up more. It's just that people get crazy about it and they turn this into a big sort of moralistic affair of a list of good foods and a list of bad foods. And that's where psychologically it can be quite damaging. So anyway, watch the video on what to eat on a cut. I think you'll enjoy it. It provide some actual concrete examples of what I eat on a cut and what I recommend to clients, how to take care of food volume, how to take care of tastes and textures, and how to go about putting together your own diet. All right, guys, hopefully you found that useful. I think it's a very useful video. It's very relevant to a lot of questions that I receive on a weekly basis. So if you've made it this far onto the video, please go ahead and subscribe, okay? Go hit the notification bell. Make sure you are on the Team Faz uh, game train and you're getting my videos. So 
uh, yeah, great. I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Have a great day.